Irene Hoffman from the um, agriculture uh, for the animal uh, production and division. Uh, Irene, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, distinguished delegates. Let me present the view of the uh, livestock sector. As in plants, we distinguish two very separate extreme systems. The one is the intensive systems where five main species, cattle, sheep, pigs, goat, and chicken, have been intensively selected for high yields in high input systems. The other extreme is the subsistence system where more than 37 locally adapted breeds provide multifunctional services for the livelihoods of rural people in low input systems. These big five species currently provide 87% of global food supply and the other species, the 13% may look small but they are contribution to various uh, food and nutrition in local systems is considerable. Livestock produces food in all systems and currently the main outcome in landless systems is that more than 80% of global pig, uh, egg and chicken meat comes from intensive landless systems. On the other hand, livestock pro provides uh, contributions to crop production through manure, draft power and so on, which is most considerable in the mixed systems. Livestock ownership is more equally distributed than that of land and this allows people to create gen uh, substantial income with little land and capital access and therefore improve their nutritional status. There are also considerable employment opportunities gener generated in the livestock sector. For example, in Africa, for every thousand liters of milk produced, 77 direct farm jobs are created and in India every job in the dairy industry creates half a job in dung collection. So there are side effects on income. In most developing countries more than two-thirds of the people own livestock which then contributes to direct food and income. Breeding has considerably improved access to food because those countries that have breeding programs show much higher yields per animal than those countries without breeding programs and this has allowed for cheap supply particularly for urban populations and particularly in monogastric species. You can see that the prevalence of undernourishment declines as the uh, supply in protein and particularly protein of animal origin uh, increases and currently 26% of human global protein and 13% of calories comes from animal source products. They provide also highly bioavailable micronutrients, minerals and vitamins and if they are missing we uh, estimate that about 34 million disability adjusted life years occur. The, pr the, the special importance is for children and women. However, in reality, men eat more meat and animal products than women and children, and the urban classes eat more than the rural classes, rural populations which uh, live on, on this broad variety of products. As Braulio mentioned, health is an important aspect and livestock transmit zoonosis. This is very closely related to food safety in livestock products and therefore has to be taken into consideration and it differs between the system. Our modern lifestyle tends to go for uh, lean meat and lean meat cuts and that may ignore the important uh, value of fats in, for calories that are important for many people and also the micronutrients that are usually higher in what we consider off-falls. Animal species, breed, age and so on 
do uh, have an effect on food composition and selection can influence this in some respect. For example, you can modulate the uh, levels of certain fatty acids, but also proteins, minerals, and vitamins. As in plants, we see that the solid content in a consumer portion of either milk or meat or egg has declined with increasing yields from the old breeds to the modern breeds. But that has been more than compensated for by the increase in yield per individual animal. For example, in dairy, since the 1940s, we have a fourfold increase in the total solid nutrients that one cow produces per year. So you have a trade-off between nutrition and uh, excess here. If we look at the stability, this is very closely related to overall sustainability of the sector. And we can see that um, the locally adapted breeds provide very high uh, number of ecosystem services beyond only animal source food, which is very low in the intensive systems. But the intensive systems are extremely good at resource efficiency per unit food product. As we intensify, animal genetic re diversity declines and um, yeah, leads to the erosion we all um, regret. There are important trade-offs with the other sectors because livestock is the biggest land user. So as we move from, from low intensive systems to intensive systems. We need more cereals, more land to grow cereals. And uh, this has repercussions on the land area, but it also has repercussions on the blue sector where fish me meal is used as a feed input in intensive systems. And there are uh, considerable impacts on water and habitat pollution. On the other hand, the low input systems, they use non-convertible land and don't compete with humans for food. So they have a very important niche. To conclude, there is no simple answer. We can see that the highly selected breeds have a very clear advantage in producing lots of food, increasing availability, and allowing cheap products for very broad economic access. On the other hand, the locally adapted breeds have uh, easy physical access and allow a, a range of services for producers. The issues of utilization and stability are very complicated and there are pros and cons in each of the systems that have to be carefully balanced and uh, are location specific. Thank you.